This is my MacBook 14 inch. It finally arrived. I've had it for about 48 hours. This is the 10 core CPU with a 32 core GPU with 32 gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte SSD. I've had it for about, what, 48 hours now. I actually had to reroute my package from being delivered in Virginia to New York City because that's where I'm staying for a quick getaway slash work project. And I have a lot of thoughts on this. Please bear with me with this horrible audio and horrible lighting, but I really wanted to get my thoughts out quickly before I do a more in-depth look at each individual category that I think is worth making a video on. So if you're interested in learning more about my experience transitioning over to this and making this my daily workstation, be sure to subscribe so you can stay up to date with all of that. The larger 16 by 10 aspect ratio, so you have a little bit taller of a screen, even when using Premiere Pro and having all my various tools open, I never felt like it was too crammed. If you're actually using this primarily for portability and its form factor, then you will appreciate having the smaller 14 inch over the 16 inch. When you are working in those smaller spaces, just on your lap for the most part, I think a 16 inch screen might be a little bit better at times, but in certain situations, it's not gonna be as convenient to have. That's because of its size and weight. I have been traveling so much with this laptop over the past couple days. One day I literally walked like five miles with this. Easy, you know, before taking a break. The fact that it fits so snug in my bag still gives me room to put my keyboard, my mouse, my camera and all the other accessories. So the 16 inch is about a pound, a pound and a half heavier than this, which can add up over time. Hey, it's me 10 hours in the future. I've been editing this video all over the place from the subway to various cafes and other random spots. That's obviously one of the benefits of having a small 14 inch form factor. Just the ability to carry it around and not feel the weight, but also, I mean, it's got the long battery life still, even though it's not as big as the 16 inch. The, trade-off that you get with the 16 inches. Obviously it's bigger and clunkier, so it's not as easy to carry in smaller bags all over the place and to use and edit wherever you want. So that's definitely been one of the benefits of having this. Um, but throughout this video, I'll just throw in other random clips of where I've been using this, just to give you an idea of just how compact and easy it is to carry it around and just edit anywhere with. The other thing I wanna stress and highlight in this video quickly is the importance of my choice picking the 14 inch model over the larger 16 inch model. And so in my time using the laptop, I've been taking notes on the things that I really like about it as well, some of the weird quirks that I've been running into and some of the maybe alternative solutions that I've had to kind of figure out along the way. So to be honest, I was a little bit hesitant when making the switch from an Asus Rogue G14, which has the AMD Ryzen, 4900, 40 gigabytes of RAM, and a two terabyte SSD. And it has the GTX 2060 MQ or Max-Q model. So by no means a slouch, but I, like I shared in my previous video, I was running into a lot of issues using that computer. It's a very capable laptop, but overall, the software and the operating system just weren't playing nice. If you've heard on AMD's CPUs recently have been experiencing this weird memory leak issue, I think it was and to this day, it still really hasn't been resolved. It'll sometimes work really well, and then other days, it just will crash frequently, or you'll just run into horrible slowdowns that just really ruin the whole editing process. I've been editing almost everywhere with this laptop. And especially working on the go in a city like this where maybe you have a work lifestyle that requires you to sneak in as much work time as possible. I've definitely been able to do that on this trip because you know we're going from location to location any little spot with a little table that's all i need to get the computer up and running and again i haven't charged at all all day and i'm still at like 80 percent battery and i've been editing for i don't know how many hours so again all that performance all the time unplugged in such a small form factor is a game changer really and the fact that it's more powerful than anything i've ever had desktop or laptop wise is just mind-blowing charger that comes with a MacBook Pro 14 inch, if if you upgrade it, is the 96 watt charger, so about 100 watts. There are plenty of USB-C 100 watt chargers out there and I brought one on the trip with me. It's able to power and charge my Rogue G14. However, it's not gonna be able to get the same level of performance on just 100 watts because I think it needs at least 180 with its full charger. Even plugged in with 100 watts, you're still not gonna be getting the same performance compared to this unplugged. With my first initial setup of this, it was actually very similar to the experience coming to an iPad, just everything being 
very smooth and intuitive. The other benefit that I'm learning about that is new to me as someone who's a Windows user and has never had Mac before is AirDrop. The fact that I can just easily select the files on my phone and then AirDrop it to my Mac to edit and work with. There were a bunch of things that I did have to Google along the way. Uh, just figure out what do you do for this or what kind of shortcuts do you need that were equivalent to what I was used to on Windows. I guess there were a couple weird quirks, like for example, in a lot of situations, I guess you can't just hit the delete key, you have to hit command delete, which is weird. And then there's no copy and paste, or there's no cut and paste, so I can't hit con command X as far as I know. And then you have to hit command control V or command option V to paste or to move the file which I think is really weird. So I definitely have been running into a lot of interesting transitions like that, but nothing too crazy that made me think, oh man, I, I miss Windows really. I never really realized how much I would appreciate this, but the fact that these fans really don't need to turn on until you actually are maxing out your GPU and CPU for a couple minutes. And although these computers are designed to handle, you know, heat and heavier workloads for prolonged periods of time, it's, somewhat unsettling when your computer feels like it's about to take off on your lap or on the desk. And although I know, and you could look at the task manager on my Windows laptop and you can see like, oh, it's only at like 10% CPU and 10% GPU load or whatever. It's not really stressed out, but the fans always kicked on very, very quickly. Whether you were doing the most basic tasks like web browsing, copying a file over, sometimes the fans would kick on to 100% without very much effort. So with that though, I'll, I'll mention something that I think is really important for people who are considering this or the 16 inch. And I know a lot of people, as I'm reading comments on these other videos that are doing the comparisons, have slight regrets or concerns with their choice of getting the 14 inch and thinking, oh man, should I have gone the 16 inch? I think for the most part, again, you're not gonna realize or notice much of those differences with the exception of the physical size here and the slightly smaller speakers. With the task that I've done, it's barely gotten warm even with exporting a video, a 4K video with 422, 10 bit. Rendering was fine on that, like your final export was usually fine on that laptop, but actually scrubbing through the footage was terrible, it was miserable. Frequently I would have to have the playback quality in the viewer at half or a quarter, and frequently it would just hang up and you have to give it like a couple seconds before it would actually scrub to that part of the clip. So very difficult to edit with. Opening that same project and finishing it off, completing it and exporting it here was just a breeze for the most part. It's a portable machine. I should be able to use this anywhere with no limitations. And that's something that this unlocks. Their commute being so long, it's like an hour and a half to our Airbnb. Any kind of train ride is just a great chance for me to get a lot of editing done. And that's exactly what we've been doing. This is something I've never really been able to do. I'd have to probably, if I wanted to get like real editing done, I'd have to wait till I got back to the Airbnb. But being that we're out so much, you know, by the time we get back, it'll probably be like, you know, 11, 10. You gotta get up and ready for the next day pretty early. So you don't really want to do that at night. Um, but I have all this like downtime that I'm not really able to do anything normally, but Again, with that laptop, it's it's something that is now possible that usually, you know, you, you, you wish you could, but now you can. Another cool thing and something that was really important to me, like I said, I have a very heavy Google Drive file stream sync workflow where I back up everything to the cloud and I only have it locally synced to my computer when I'm working on that active project. So all my current wedding and client videos that I'm working on are synced locally and the rest are accessible anytime and I can just sync individual files or the whole folder, it's very easy. But on Windows, for whatever reason, and I'm not sure if this was more of an issue on the Windows Explorer or if it was more of an issue with Google File Stream, but it would always cause the computer to hang up, lag, or Explorer would crash. Sometimes it would lock up my entire Windows laptop, especially when syncing larger files or larger folders with several files in them. I can't even explain what, why the issue was happening, but it had to like load each file individually. Not so much load, but maybe like loading a preview or something. Last night I um, I did run into a couple issues where I ran out of storage. I was down to like my last couple gigabytes, so I had to free up some space. Luckily I had just finished exporting one of my wedding videos and the fact that I have Google File Stream, I can unsync that folder. So once it's done, it's just in the cloud, it's not locally safe, so it freed up a bunch of space. Limiting your space on here, you limit the amount of projects you can actively work on, so it can perhaps incentivize you to finish those projects sooner, export them, get it done, and unsync it from your computer, 
that we can move on to the next project and you're moving a lot faster versus having a lot of things in queue. I'm trying to get into that mindset and hopefully that helps me finish a lot of things sooner too. The notch I have some mixed feelings about because you're getting much larger screen real estate. And if you want to consider it not even there, then the notch is just part of your notification tab at the top. I wish more apps would just actually take advantage of that top area where I could just drag and just have the notch take up the middle part of the top of my apps. When I'm editing in Premiere Pro, that's what I do. I manually like resize so I can get just a little bit more um, screen real estate at the bottom for my timeline. The actual screen bezels are super thin. Like again, when you're full screening your apps, it's almost like there's no bezel there. So thanks for checking out this video. If you're interested in more MacBook related reviews, comparisons, and thoughts, be sure to subscribe and stay tuned. I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you.